Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Vegetarian Cooking with JJ. This week's episode is going to be a matzo ball soup, a vegan matzo ball soup. I thought it would be a great idea since Rosh Hashanah is approaching and it is a popular meal to enjoy around Jewish holidays. So here it is, our delicious vegan matzo ball soup. I'm trying to show you without spilling it. You'll get a better shot in a moment. There you go. So let me know if you try out this recipe, if you make any adjustments yourself, or if you already had a vegan matzo ball soup recipe. Feel free to share. Drop me a line down below in the comments. I'm always interested to hear your feedback or any questions that you may have. For those of you who are new to my channel, my name is Janice Janitakis, but you can call me JJ. I travel the globe in my kitchen and keep things interesting by veganizing many different international dishes. And I hope you gain some inspiration along the way. If you tune in week after week, there's a new video every Monday. But without further ado, let's head over to the kitchen and get cooking! First of all, we're going to pour two cups of our organic matzo meal into this bowl. I'm going to add two teaspoons of our baking powder. Add some salt to your liking. I'm adding about a three quarter teaspoon, more or less. We're going to pour in one tablespoon of our Bob's Red Mill egg replacer. And I'll add two tablespoons of water. So if you're making gluten-free matzo balls, you can use a gluten-free matzo meal. I'm going to add a quarter cup of tahini. This will help with the binding and flavor. And I'm going to be using one cup of carbonated water. I'm adding one teaspoon of garlic powder for my personal touch. I'm also adding some thyme. I'm using fresh thyme because I ran out of the dry thyme. So I'll just mix it up here. And I'm going to be adding some paprika. I'll just shake some in. I'll say it's about a half a teaspoon. Now it's time to incorporate our wet ingredients. So we'll start with our tahini our Bob's Red Mill egg replacer, our carbonated water, and we'll mix it up thoroughly. Once it comes together, we're going to use our hands. Now that our dough is all ready, we're going to be using an ice cream scooper to form our matzo balls. This makes it easier to keep them equal sizes. We'll roll them up and squeeze them and try to get them smooth. Now that our matzo balls are ready, we'll pop them in the fridge for 30 minutes. While the matzo balls are in the fridge, we're going to move on to the veggie stock. Now I'm going to chop up our carrots into more manageable pieces. These are going to be for the stock, so it's not crucial that they're cut evenly. So I have one cup. I cut off the ends out of habit, but there's no need for this since it's just the stock and an additional cup. Now moving on to our celery, we'll just cut right through, roughly chop it up, and we're using three ribs of celery. Here we have half of a yellow onion. I'm just gonna dice it all up. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect since it's part of the soup stock. I have five cloves of garlic. I'm just gonna mince them up. I'm getting some freshly ground black pepper for our stock as well. And I'm going to be using one tablespoon of poultry seasoning. 
It's ground thyme, sage, marjoram, rosemary, black pepper, and nutmeg. And I'm chopping some parsley for later on. I'm going to add a half a teaspoon of cayenne and a half a teaspoon of paprika. This is my own personal touch and it's optional. I'm going to heat our stove top to medium, bring a pot of water to a boil. I'm using six cups of water. You're welcome to use more depending on what intensity of flavor you would like. I'm adding in our diced onions and our chopped up carrots. I'm adding in our celery. Adding in the garlic. I'll add in our poultry seasoning, give it a little stir here. This is going to darken the broth, but that's fine with me. If you're going for something different, you can always make adjustments accordingly. I'm adding in two teaspoons of raw sugar. Our black pepper. Our cayenne and paprika. And I'll give it a nice stir. I'm adding in a quarter cup of nutritional yeast. This will provide an umami flavor. I'm adding salt to my personal preference and you're welcome to add as much or as little salt as you want. Now it's boiling away, so I'm gonna cover it, reduce our heat to low, and I'm gonna allow it to simmer for 20 minutes. And here I'm going to shred up our firm tofu. I'm just using a box grater. This will give it that chick un texture. And don't worry if you don't get all the pieces perfect. It will give it a more rustic feel, a more homemade feel. It will be all the more delightful. Here we go. I'm just going to be using half of this block of tofu because we don't need the entire block. I'm adding one teaspoon of oregano and a little pinch. Sprinkle in some salt and we're going to add some red wine vinegar just to coat it and a little bit of olive oil. I'm adding in a touch of the poultry seasoning. We don't need a lot because the stock has it. And I'm gonna add in some garlic powder. Just sprinkle it in. And we'll toss it up. I'm slicing up one rib of celery. I'm slicing up one carrot here. The stock is cooked to my satisfaction and I'm adding in some parsley for the last couple of minutes. Now over here in this bowl, we're going to strain our stock into it. We'll place our strainer over this bowl and very carefully pour our pot over top. Try not to splash, try not to spill. Be careful. He said be careful. I'll just squish it down to try to get all the liquid out. I'm going to set our stove top to medium and get our pot hot. I'm adding some olive oil to the bottom of the pan here. I'm adding in some fennel seeds for another dimension of flavor. This is also an optional addition. Now it's time to add in our shredded tofu. Adding in the carrots and celery. In general, matzo ball soup is considered to be Eastern European. However, I found some cool recipes online. One of them included turmeric, cinnamon, nutmeg, cumin, and star anise. This was a Yemenite version. I also found a Sephardic version which included lemon, saffron, dried lime, cayenne, and turmeric. 
our tofu is sticking, but it's no problem at all because we're going to be deglazing the pan by pouring in our stock. Spice adds vitality and flavor to meals, of course. So I wonder, are you going to try a different version of matzo ball soup this Rosh Hashanah or otherwise and surprise your family? Let me know in the comments below. Have you personally tried another version of matzo ball soup that is not the traditional Ashkenazi version? I'm always interested to hear, so drop me a line down below. Now it's time to add in our matzo balls. So we'll carefully place them in. Try not to splash as you do this. You don't want to get burnt. Give them a gentle stir around. I'm chopping up some dill as well. You see, our matzo balls are starting to float, and that is a good sign. Matzo balls used to be called knedla back in Poland in the 1930s. This is before American comedians popularized the name matzo balls back in the late 1930s. The well-known company Manischewitz packaged matzo balls for the masses, and they dubbed them Alsatian feathery balls, which I think is more comedic than matzo balls. We've had them covered for 20 minutes here, and they're all afloat, they're all buoyant, so that's a good sign, sign that they're cooked. With the bigger matzo balls, you want to make sure that they're cooked enough. Here we go, and we're ready to pour everything into a bowl. Now for the final touch, I'm adding a bit more dill and some parsley. Just gently stirring it in. I'm turning the heat off now and I'm filling up this bowl. Two matzo balls should be sufficient for one bowl since these are quite generously sized. I'm adding some additional dill and a little bit of parsley. It's that time everyone, the time you've all been waiting for. Well, I've been waiting for it. <laughs> As you know, if you tune into my show here, I get to taste it, this beautiful creation. So let's just get a, let's dive into the matzo bowl here. And we'll get some broth. And a bit of the tofu pieces, try to get everything. I need to make a smaller piece. I want to, I don't want to try to fit that much in my mouth. <laughs> Here we go. Gotta love that fresh dill. And it certainly hits the spot for me. Now, can you make this kosher for Passover? Yes, you can, if you exclude the tofu. Tofu is considered kitnyot because it can expand beans. But if you're Sephardic, then beans are okay for you. Since it's packaged, it's a packaged food, then it may need to have a kosher for Passover symbol on it. But talk to your rabbi and see what they say. <laughs> There's always so many different points of view and opinions in the community. <laughs> I love that hint of spice too. And there you have it everybody, another delicious meal to add to your recipe booklets. If you like this video in any way, shape or form, hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to my channel. There's going to be a new video every Monday. We're traveling the globe in my kitchen and keeping things interesting in my kitchen and in yours. Bon appetit.